The following episode of Rinse contains language or subject matter that might not be suitable for children. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Rinse, Shower for the Soul on Minisodes with me, Shane Fame Alexander. Cleansing your soul with quick and impactful discussions on health, wealth, and life. Hey, my name's Shane Alexander, and welcome to my brand new podcast, Rinse. Think of it as a compliment to my other podcast, Shower for the Soul. For my debut episode of Rinse, I want to make it a special one, and this means I had to dig a bit. I've gone back to 2015 to an article I wrote for Geeks and Beats, a podcast hosted by radio's Ellen Gross and TV's Michael Hainsworth. Here's the backstory. Back in 2015, I was very open with the G&B newsroom on my mental health. And as any newsroom would do, we tried to make it into a story. How can we make this into something to help others? How can we inform, but also tell a story that even our musical heroes have dark days? After a day of brainstorming and pitching, we came up with this. It's my favorite article I have ever written on the internet. And it's the Geeks newsroom that made it possible through their understanding, patience, and love. In the biz, we call it evergreen material. Stories that just don't have a best up before date. And this is why I can dig it up now and present it to you for the first time in audio form. Yeah, that's my piano. This is my room. It's all draped in purple drapes. It's a very spiritual room, and I have to go to the piano at least once a day. How did you bring yourself to get back on stage? My wife and my manager stuff together with me one night, and they, they said, you know, we thought about this. How would you like to have a solo career? And, go, and I said, I'd know, I would know when we come to my concerts. And they go, oh, yeah, you want to bet? And I said, I know they won't. And so we tried it out, and it went over fantastic. How did you feel out there the first time? Oh, scared. Scared was the word, yes. Now, we've had the other Beach Boys in Australia since. Right. Uh, do you still chat to them? No. No. Are you sad about that? Yeah. I guess it's romantic in a way to think that mental illness is attached with creative people. Mental illness can be hidden by most, but for musicians, the illness tends to show in their work like Brian Wilson's work with the Beach Boys. Dark Side of the Moon had a theme of mental illness, referring to Sid Barrett's bipolar disorder and rumoured schizophrenia. The idea was, let's get Sid out of London, away from acid, away from all his friends, who treated him like a god. I mean, they worshipped him. And uh, it was clearly much more serious than we thought it was, because he couldn't respond, he couldn't communicate, he couldn't do anything in form and terror. I think he had nightmares, I mean, real living nightmares, trying to climb up walls. And, and the biggest change for me, his eyes. He's had so much life in him, and then his eyes just went dead. I mean, we're all hoping that this rest and to get away, he was just basically burnt out and just needed a complete break. But it clearly was much more serious than that. It was very scary, very upsetting. Stress and fame play parts in mental mayhem. Enter Ian Curtis. Just as his group Joy Division gained notoriety, Curtis sank deep into depression. The fact that he was going through a divorce and just got diagnosed with epilepsy didn't help either. Curtis left the world on his own terms just as his band was about to embark on their first North American tour. He was just 24 years old. After a failed suicide attempt, Curtis finally took his own life on 18th of May, 1980, the night before Joy Division was set to leave for the States. Iggy Pop's The Idiot was on his record turntable. Who knows what really went on that night? Who knows what, what really happened? 
he was on his own that night. He, he, he'd seen Debbie, and they'd had an argument, and then he spent most of the night on his own, and who knows what went through his head. Whatever happened between Debbie and Ian on that last night was, um, well, I'd, I'd say, was quite obviously what finished him off. You know, he felt he couldn't cope with it anymore, and that, 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 that was it. You know, none of us were there. He didn't phone anybody up. We had been warned twice. We'd been warned by the fact he took an overdose of fucking tablets. And our response was, like the line from Closer, it's a cry for help, a plea for anaesthesia. Wrong. Secondly, I'd been warned on a train to London two weeks earlier by Anik. I said, what do you think of the new album? She goes, I'm terrified. The important thing to know is that we're not alone. Even super rock stars suffer from some type of mental illness. People are out there to help. Addiction services are places like the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, or CAMH, which is the largest mental health and addiction teaching hospital in Canada, a wonderful place to source help. Thank you for joining me for Rinse, periodic mini episodes of Shower for the Soul. If you have any ideas for a rinse episode, hit me up at hostshane at gmail.com. Be sure to like and review and follow us on social at SFTSPodCST. Rinse is a Fame and Friends production.